Welcome back to Madman Review. In some of our past videos, we lightly touched on Saturday Night Specials and asked if you wanted us to do a video on the subject. Many of you said yes, and we just couldn't refuse. So, by popular demand, we'll talk about it. But before we do, for the benefit of all the Millennials and Gen Zs who have no idea, let me provide some background. Saturday Night Specials are low-cost firearms that are commonly available in the poorest places in America. These are typically tiny and chambered in a weak cartridge, though there are exceptions. But they're prone to jams, malfunctions, cracked slides, and catastrophic failures. The term first appeared in print in 1917 in the Coffeeville Daily Journal, referring to an inexpensive revolver. Saturday Night Specials became wildly popular after the implementation of the Gun Control Act of 1968, aka the GCA, which prohibited the importation of certain kinds of firearms, including junk revolvers manufactured by Rom Gesellschaft, and even high-quality handguns like the Walther PPK. In this video, I'll talk about what in my opinion are the top 8 worst cheap guns, the original Saturday Night Specials. Without further ado, let's begin. Number 8. Raven Arms MP25 In 1970, a gentleman by the name of George Jennings saw the shortage of inexpensive concealable handguns that resulted from the implementation of the GCA. He founded Raven Arms, the granddaddy of all Ring of Fire companies, and invented a cheap, tiny semi-automatic pistol chambered in 25 ACP based on Browning's best pocket pistol. Christened the Raven Arms MP25, it started what would become a long lineage of Saturday Night Specials. The Raven Arms MP25 underwent several iterations, starting as the P25 and later being improved and renamed the MP25, a blowback autoloader pistol chambered in 25 ACP with a magazine capacity of 6 rounds. The pistol has a barrel length of 2.36 inches, an overall length of 4.75 inches, a width of 0.8 inches, and a height of 3.4 inches. The MP25 weighs 15 ounces when empty and features walnut grips and a chrome finish. The sights on the pistol are a blade front and a square notch rear, with the trigger releasing at around 8.38 pounds. Utilizing a simple blowback design, the pistol's frame and slide were cast using Zamac, making it affordable for the average consumer. Zamac has a low melting point and can be easily cast. It's much cheaper than other metals, making it popular for use in mass-produced consumer products like Saturday Night Specials. But it has a reputation for being brittle and prone to cracking, especially when exposed to impact or stress. In the context of firearms manufacturing, Zamac is often referred to as pot metal, used for the frames and slides of Saturday Night Specials. While it may not be as durable or as strong as ordinance grade steel, it is much more affordable, helping keep the cost of the guns down and making them available to more consumers. There were reportedly 3 million improved MP25 pistols produced before the company's factory burned down and the owner retired in 1991. The Raven Arms MP25 has been the subject of controversy and criticism for its association with crime and violence, but it has remained popular among some gun enthusiasts, as it is reportedly the most reliable out of all Saturday Night Specials built by a Ring of Fire company. I personally wouldn't carry, let alone buy one, but you do you. Number 7. Jennings J22 aka Jimenez Arms, JA22 the Jennings J-22, now known as the Jimenez JA-22, is a 22 lr caliber pistol that was first introduced in the 1970s by Jennings Firearms, a company founded by Bruce Jennings, son of George Jennings. The pistol features slide and frame made of injection-molded Zamac and is blowback-operated and striker-fired. It comes with a six-round magazine and was later renamed JA-22 after Brico Arms, the parent company of Jennings Firearms, declared bankruptcy in 2003, and was subsequently purchased by Paul Jimenez who established Jimenez Arms. While there are people who purchased a Jennings JA-22 because of its low price, it has become notorious for being picky with ammo and unreliable when not regularly cleaned. Eventually, the manufacturer Jennings Firearms declared bankruptcy and was renamed Brico Arms, another Ring of Fire company. Number 6. Brico Model 38, aka Jimenez Arms JA380 Brico Arms' most famous product was the Model 38, which would later be branded the Jimenez Arms JA380. It was a semi-automatic pistol produced from 2004 to 2020. Chambered in 380 ACP, it has a blowback-operated action and a single-action trigger. The Model 38's frame is again made of Zamac and used black plastic ribs. It has a capacity of 6 rounds and is equipped with fixed sides. It has a matte black finish, a height of 3.75 inches, a width of 0.96 inches, a weight of 19 ounces, and an overall length of 5.3 inches. It is relatively lightweight and compact, making it easily concealable, but like all Saturday Night Specials, it is a piece of junk. Brico Arms filed for bankruptcy in 2003 after losing a lawsuit in Oakland, California. 
The lawsuit was brought by the family of a seven-year-old boy named Brandon Maxfield who was paralyzed from the neck down after being shot by a family friend who was attempting to unload a Bryco Model 38 pistol chambered in 380 ACP. The plaintiffs argued that a design defect in the gun caused a cartridge feed problem, which was made apparent when the safety was on and the user pulled back the slide to check the chamber or load the cartridge. The gun discharged while pointing at Maxfield, resulting in the devastating injury. The jury found Bryco Arms responsible for the incident, leading to a $24 million judgment against the company, a record at the time. Number 5. ROM RG-14 The ROM RG-14 is a double-action revolver chambered in 22 lr and was available in two configurations, a snub-nosed version with a 1.5-inch barrel and a more typical version with a 3-inch barrel. It was manufactured and sold by Rom Gesell Shaft of Germany, which split from its parent company in the 1950s and diversified into firearms, which led to the creation of RG Industries in Miami in 1968. The American division specialized in producing revolvers and semi-automatic pistols in small calibers. The guns were not well known until John W. Hinckley Jr. used an RG-14 revolver in an attempt to assassinate President Reagan in 1981. The legal troubles and notoriety led to RG Industries folding in 1986, and the RG-14 became the most famous of all Saturday Night Specials. Unlike other revolvers, the RG-14 featured a single pin that passed through the front of the frame, through the cylinder, and into the back of the frame. In order to reload the firearm, the pin must be unscrewed, removed entirely from the revolver, and then threaded back into place after the cylinder has been reloaded. But that's not all. The ROM RG-14 is notorious for its unreliability due to the use of pot metal. The pins holding the frame are more durable than the frame, and the vibration from shots can loosen the holes, causing the gun to rattle and affect the cylinder's timing. An out-of-time cylinder renders the gun useless. Number 4. Phoenix Arms HP-22 After Raven Arms ceased operations in 1991, Phoenix Arms was founded and owned by George Jennings' ex-wife, children, grandchildren, and former general manager of his company. Raven Arms designs were sold to Phoenix, which made it another Ring of Fire company. Phoenix initially continued production of the Raven Arms MP25 before later introducing two new pistols chambered in 22 lr and 25 acp respectively, the HP-22A and HP-25A. Both are again made of Zamac. The Phoenix Arms HP-22A is a single-action semi-automatic pistol in 22 lr with a staggered 10-round magazine that makes for a compact and comfortable fit in the hand. The pistol weighs 20 ounces and measures 4.1 inches tall and 5.5 inches long. It has a 3-inch vented rib barrel, a serrated trigger, and an adjustable rear sight. The HP-22 is small and lightweight, but even with its weak chambering, its slide is known to crack near the ejection port after 2,000 rounds thereabouts. Number 3. Davis P380 Gail Davis, daughter of George Jennings, and her husband, Jim Davis, founded Davis Industries in 1982. Another Ring of Fire company, it initially produced Davis Derringers, which reportedly account for approximately 25% of the company's annual production. The profits from the Derringers paid for overhead, allowing Jim Davis to make pure profit from the rest of the product line. The Davis P380, a compact pistol with a capacity of 5 rounds, chambered in 380 ACP, is one of the company's offerings. Priced at or below $100, it features a slide made of, again, Zamac, a 2.8-inch barrel, and black grips, giving it a no-nonsense appearance. Davis Industries marketed itself as a producer of affordable arms for personal protection, offering value to its customers. The company's smaller than palm sized 22, 25, and 32 standard series models retailed for just under $70. A Davis P380 reportedly had a production cost of $15, a wholesale price of $55, a dealer price of $63 to $68, a retail price of $95 to $100, and an illegal street price of $150 to $600. However, in 1995, the company settled a product liability lawsuit bought by a first-time gun owner who was injured when his Davis P380 pistol exploded while he was practicing with it. The settlement was for 40 grand. Number 2. Lorsen L9 Lorsen Engineering Company was established in 1989 by Jim Waldorf, producing inexpensive handguns marketed to people with low income. They were connected to Raven Arms and a part of the Ring of Fire companies. In 1993, Lorsen became the number one pistol manufacturer in the United States, producing over 300,000 guns, the most popular of which was the Lorsen L9. But it filed for bankruptcy in 1996 with 18 pending lawsuits. It emerged from bankruptcy in 1997, but closed in 1998 after 22 additional lawsuits were filed. 
The Lorsen L9 is a straight blowback pistol chambered in 9mm Luger. The slide, also made of Zamac, was designed to be massive to handle 9mm pressure levels, which makes the gun heavy, but balanced. However, it's too big to fit in any holster, so it was recommended to carry it in a case. It's notorious for its inaccurate barrel, and its slide doesn't lock back when the magazine is empty. There is also no manual lock, and it's known for its low-quality, faulty construction. The L9's massive and heavy slide and its overall design don't make it ideal for self-defense, and it's not a good option for target shooting either due to its accuracy issues. Strangely, there are still some of these pistols in circulation. If you see one, you should avoid it like the plague. Number 1. Himina's Arms JA-9 JA Industries, based in Henderson, Nevada, had origins that could be traced back to 1978, also with the formation of Jennings Firearms. This company eventually filed bankruptcy and subsequently reorganized as Brico Arms, which I mentioned earlier. Brico Arms filed bankruptcy in 2003 and was subsequently purchased by Paul Jimenez, the company's former foreman. He then established Jimenez Arms in August 2004. The Jimenez Arms JA-9 is a semi-auto pistol built on a Zamac frame and chambered in 9mm. Features include an adjustable rear sight, a high visibility red front sight, a finger rest on the magazine, and a loaded chamber indicator. It has 10 plus 1 ammo capacity, a barrel length of 3.75 inches, an overall length of 6.625 inches, a width of 1.25 inches, a height of 4.75 inches, and it weighs 30 ounces. There are still gun retailers selling this pistol, but as with all the Saturday night specials on this list, it's notorious for its malfunctions. If you want a handgun that jams every two or three shots so you can do some tap, rack, and bang practice drills, then it'll be of some good use to you. Otherwise, if you really want a 9mm pistol made of Zamac for whatever reason, the High Point C9 is far more reliable. And that's all I have for you in this video. Please like, share, subscribe, and click on the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.